Good morning, and welcome to Saints Joseph and Francis Xavier Parish. Today, we are very happy to be here with Bishop Bartoszek to confer the Sacrament of Confirmation. Over the last two weekends, 145 confirmandi from our parish will receive the final sacrament of initiation. We are delighted that our families could be here to join us in this celebration. This Mass is being offered for the parishioners of Saints Joseph and Francis Xavier. Now, please join me, please stand and join me in singing our opening song, which can be found in your leaflet, Come Holy Ghost. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's a beautiful morning out there. The sun is shining. We're celebrating the 400th anniversary today uh, of the canonization of St. Francis Xavier, and St. Teresa of Avila, and St. Philip Neri, and if you want a complete list, you have to ask the bearded priest over on that side. <laughs> it's wonderful to be with you. Uh, we want to be in the company of Francis and Philip and Teresa and Joseph and all the rest. And we begin this celebration recognizing that we'll have to change. That doesn't scare us. It doesn't scandalize us. It doesn't uh, do anything but give us hope that our Lord will be with us in, on every step of the journey. So let us take a moment to recall our sins and ask of the Lord his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask of the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who reign, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes to give them oil of gladness in a place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God you shall be called. 
I will give them recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. The response is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received sp the spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Praise and honor to you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have the great honor of welcoming Bishop Bartosik to our parish, St. Joseph and Francis Xavier. Very grateful for your presence, Bishop, and I thank you for making time last weekend and this to be with us and confirm, confirm these awesome young women and men. I've known Bishop Bartosik for close to 35 years and as I listen to Deacon Curls read the gospel, I think this is the guy that lives those words. Throughout his priesthood, he has lived the words of the prophet Isaiah, caring for those who are forgotten in a special way. He's a great witness for us, and it's good that the church and her wisdom chose him to be a bishop and blessing for us that he is our Episcopal vicar. Grateful for your presence, Bishop, and I thank you. Please join me in thanking the bishop for his presence. And now I present to the bishop the wonderful confirmation candidates, or part of the group anyway, I'm going to invite you to stand as I call your name, and please remain standing until the bishop invites you to be seated. So bishop and the rest of you, I present this wonderful class. James Baum, Leah Bradley, Brian Bradley, Luca Budovich, Cecilia Carlton, Grace Carr, Caitlin Carroll, Jonathan Clark, Tatum Clark, August Close, Riley Coffey, Philip Cook, Megan Feldman, John Fitzgerald, Margaret Fitzgerald, Liam Gallagher, Morgan Gallagher, Samuel Golden, Olivia Harris, Bridget Hart, Michael Henn, Aidan Jones, Jude Kelly, Catherine Kelly, Grace Lieber, Lily Marino, Samuel Marriott, Abby Morton, Knox Noble, Catherine Passerat, 
Lucy Petherbridge, Tommy Plater, Hunter Pope, Veronica Quinn, Michael Ryan, Sarah Santiago, Louisiana Sawyer, George Scallon, Jack Scallon, James Scallon, Logan Simpson, Stowe Singer, Matthew Slater, Alexander Sternad, Reese Tauke, Blaise Van Osdo, Quinn Vitu, Ellie Ware, and Leo Wolf. My friends, Bishop, I present to you this wonderful class of 22, 2022's confirmation group. We congratulate you, we bless you, and we thank you for being here. Please be seated. I have to say, I, I already told them this over in the school, but I'm very impressed by the poise uh, and the maturity, you know, the ability to talk to a bishop. I don't find it everywhere I go, you know. So uh, thank you for that. What I didn't tell you, you might not know about me over there, uh, just so that you all hear it, uh, I go to church a lot, you know. <laughs> and um, I picked the readings today um, because I want to hear them a lot. I do a lot of confirmations and I want to hear today's readings a lot. Cecilia, you did a beautiful job with the first reading. Margaret, was that you in the second? Very nicely done. You did a good job too, Deacon. <laughs> The earth doesn't move, you know, all the time when you go to church. But it moved for me uh, almost a year ago. Um, it was at the cathedral, and we were all there, uh, the whole nine yards. And I was sitting way back there in the cathedral in a place where I couldn't see the ambo. And the moment that first reading began, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. And all the way down through the end, it was just like I had been plugged in by somebody. And I couldn't see who that was, and it was driving me a little bit nuts throughout the rest of the Mass, because I've heard that reading a thousand times. It's a reading where the prophet receives his vocation. It's like God speaking to the prophet saying, I know you. I know what you're good for. As a matter of fact, I made you, and I gave you those gifts that you have, and you might not even know what they are right now, but I gave them to you, and I gave them to you for a purpose. The reading says, so that you might be a blessing to my people. It was, it was a little bit like, you know, you're playing football, and you're... You, you're running down the field and you just can't get open, but you're trying to get open and all of a sudden you're like at the five yard line and you can't even, you, you turn around and you can't see the quarterback and then all of a sudden it's right there in your hands, you know? This kid doing the reading, he was like the Tom Brady of lectors, you know? <laughs> A beautiful voice, beautiful inflection, tremendous intelligence, but most of all he was praying. He believed what he was reading. And it was like I had never heard that reading before. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly to announce a year of favor from the Lord. I want to believe every day, and just because I'm a bishop doesn't mean this is easy for me or for anybody in the room, I think. I want to believe every day that God knows me. 
He doesn't just know about me like he knows what I did. He knows me. And that he's got something for me to do. And that something that he wants me to do is what will make me happiest. Out of all the things that I could choose to do, the thing that he wants me to do is what's going to make me happiest in my life. I'm built for it. I want to believe that every day of my life. And that day, almost a year ago, I believed it. A new. And after Mass, you know, full of solemn, you know, decorum, you know, we marched back down the aisle and then I beat it right back up here like, who are you? I found out I know the kid. I've known him for a couple years. But I didn't know his gift. I mean, he has many, I'm sure, but I didn't know that he had an extraordinary gift. And I wanted to make sure he knew it. Now, every one of you have gifts. Some of you told me a little bit about some of your gifts. Uh, Music, athletic ability, uh, sort of the vision of where you might want to go in the future. Your parents and your godparents and your older sisters and brothers and maybe even your younger ones and your teachers, your priests, Father Wayne, Father Rob, other people here at the parish, they can tell you more about your gifts. But the one who can really tell you about your gifts is the one who gave them to you. Not your parents, not your godparents, not your bishop. So Jesus quotes this gospel. Uh, In the gospel, Jesus quotes what we heard in the first reading. Uh, The prophet is at the beginning of his vocation. Jesus is also at the beginning of his public ministry when he walks into the synagogue and reads that very same passage because he's about to begin. He's about to embark on his public ministry using the gifts that he received uh, for the good of the people that God loves. So, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, and I presume that we all do, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to make a gift of your life because that's what he did. That's what that sign means that God himself has made a gift of his life for us. He died. You know, he lived 33 years. He had dinner. He went to bed. He got up. He washed. He talked. He had friends. He learned a trade. And rather than lie to us, or rather than chicken out in one way or another, He let himself be crucified for us. Making a gift of his own life, and from that moment on, for us, for us disciples of Jesus, death is not defeat. I didn't make that up. Stephen Colbert did. (laughs) He said this a few weeks ago, probably a month ago, Somebody asked him, aren't you religious or something? And he said, uh, I'm a Christian and a Catholic. And that's always connected to the idea that love and sacrifice are somehow connected. And giving yourself to other people. And that death is not defeat. How can it be? If we believe what we believe, which is that he died on the cross, and three days later, he was not dead. How could death be defeat for his disciple? If we really believe that. And if you really believe that, your life will look different. If you believe that, your life will shine in one way or another. The Lord will use you if you believe that. He will use you to bring good news to the poor. 
Which poor, what kind of good news? I have no idea. There are a thousand million different things, ways it can look. The ways it can look are as different as we are different, one from another. But if you're his disciple, you are called to make a gift of yourself. And that gift will be good news for the poor. Death is not defeat. Everyone wants to believe that. What I would encourage you to do is to ask the Lord in prayer if this is true, if what I'm telling you is true. You can trust him. You might not be able to trust me, but you know you can trust the one who gave his life for you. So ask him if it's true what he said. That So talk to him like this. Lord, do you really know me? Like, not just about me, but do you really know me better than my mom? Better than my best friend? Better than I know me? Do you know me? Do you know what I'm good for? Do you want me to discover that? Ask him. Talk to him that way. And not just the kids, right? You do it, Grandma. You do it, Padrino. Let's all do that. Lord, what am I good for today? What do you want me? What am I here for? St. Paul says in the second reading that we are sons and daughters of God. God is our Father. Because of him, through him, with him, and in him, we are sons and daughters of God because his only son has come so close to us that he can't come any closer. He's given his life for us. The one who was deathless tasted death for our sake so that we would believe that he's for us and on our side. And we can come to know him. We can come to know God through Jesus, with Jesus and in Jesus. I told you a little bit about myself because you know what? You can't make me up, right? If you go to your friend tomorrow and say, I met the bishop, he's an awesome athlete, you know? That's just not true. <laughs> I'm me, you know? You have to get to know me to find out that a ball coming at me, oh my God, you know? And it's been like that since I was little. And Jesus is no different. We can't make Jesus up. Jesus is a person that you can come to know, but you won't know him unless you talk to him, unless you hang out with him, unless you tell him who you are. He knows already, but that's not a relationship. He doesn't want to know from way up there. He wants to know because you give him the time. Which is why it's important that the earth doesn't always shake when we come to church, but we come. Because we know that that's his word. It's the word of God that the quarterback is throwing. And once in a while you catch the pass. And it's enough for the next 20 years. Don't make Jesus up. Be his son. Uh, be the father's son in Jesus. Be Jesus' brother. That's what he wants. To show you the father. And the spirit that they send together upon us, the spirit of God that comes into us today, um, it's the means Jesus uses to get you to recognize when he's talking to you. That's why it's going to come into your heart. So that as you try to be open with your ears and with your eyes and with your heart, as you try to be open, you'll recognize the beautiful interventions of the only Son of God in your life to, make, to convince you that you are a son, that you are a daughter, that you have gifts to discover that will make you happy and that can be put at the service of the ones God loves in the church and in the world so that you can be good news 
to the poor. Finally, um, I can't remember why I stumbled across this. It was several years ago, maybe six years ago, that the Holy Father... Oh, it was Ash Wednesday, I know. And uh, it was for Ash Wednesday that uh, he said, remember that on the Christian journey, uh, the journey the Lord has invited us to undertake, there is no saint without a past and no sinner without a future. So, Teresa, Philip, Francis, Ignatius, there's a saint with a past. And Isidore, don't know much about him. There is no saint without a past and no sinner without a future. So that's an invitation to everybody here uh, to listen to the word and to hear God speaking to you today. So like I said, three moments. The first moment is where you say, I believe that. All that stuff that that guy with the funny hat was saying, I believe it. And my parents and my godparents may have spoken for me when I was a kid, but they're not speaking for me anymore. If this is what you believe, uh, I ask you to stand up and renew your baptismal promises at this time. Ready? To renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay, now, uh, those of you who are going to be confirmed, I invite you to close your eyes. And I ask you to please keep them closed. Until I tell you. Dearly beloved, Let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
You may be seated.
trusting in God as we trust in the Father. Let us place all of our needs in his hands. God has given us the gift of life. May those who lead the church as bishops and priests always lead us in the path that leads to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. God has given us a new birth through baptism in the Holy Spirit. May we cherish the gift of our faith and act on it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God has given us the gift of faith community May we share our gifts and talents within our parish family for the good of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God has been generous in loving us. May we, we, may we be generous in our love for God and a neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God has given the world this gift of salvation in Christ. May all people, especially the people of Ukraine, Live in the peace that only Jesus can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God bestows on each person special gifts and abilities. May we be open to the spirit who calls young men and women to priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God has created us to be part of the human family. May we show our gratitude to and share our gifts with all who have formed us in Christ's love and shared that love with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God made us so that we might live with him forever. May all our family and friends who have died be welcomed into God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers we offer you this morning. We offer them because we trust in your love. We offer them in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Just a word, we're taking a collection today. We decided as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, perhaps we're called to share our gifts with others and our collection taken at Confirmation Masses this weekend, as well as our Sunday Masses, will help the church in Ukraine and will help the refugees there. I ask you to be generous. Please join me in singing our offertory song, number 649, Oh, Breathe on Me, O Breath of God, number 649.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, that they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, Mark, and all his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in singing our communion song number 1031, Taste and See, number 1031. Good. 
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. One of my favorite jobs as pastor is to say thank you. I thank all who have prepared these students for confirmation. You've done a great job, both uh, teachers and administrators, especially parents. And I thank you now, confirmandi, for being true witnesses to the faith, to your peers and to your friends. Thank the bishop for coming Thank Jonathan and Michelle and Yuri for beautiful music. And uh, just a word that, you know, I, I get a little, a little emotional today as I was watching this confirmation and participating closely. I looked out at parents whose marriages I witnessed, witnessed and who, kids who I had the opportunity to baptize. I, I'm just so very grateful to be with you today. After Mass, the bishop will come back after the recessional and we'll have opportunities for photographs with the bishop. Father Ryan and I will be out of the way, off to the side. So, 
The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Please join us for our closing song, um, Go Make a Difference. It's found also in your program.